Okay, let me stop before I get demonetized. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Oh my god, I am so excited, so excited today. Today we are here with the Urban Decay Game of Thrones Capsule Collection. Whew. Obviously, to be festive, I am wearing my House Stark shirt, which is fashionably ripped at the neck. And by fashionably, I mean this just ripped and I got very lucky that it ripped in a spot that people purposely buy ripped shirts in. So for those of you who are not fully aware or aware at all, if you're new here, hello, I'm Nicole. And Urban Decay is and has been one of my favorite brands for a really long time. And Game of Thrones is not only my favorite TV show, but also my favorite book series of all time. So when I saw that they were doing a collab to celebrate the final season of the show, I peed a little. And then I peed even more when the collection showed up at my front door yesterday. And I just realized that I was so excited to start this video that I didn't even turn any of my lights on. So hold on one second. Okay, much better. We're back in business. We're ready to go. So this is the Urban Decay Game of Thrones Vault. It is coming out in early April. I will put all the details of when it will be available, how much it's going to cost, where it will be available, etc., in the description down below in as much detail as I have for you guys. I do know in advance that I looked on their website and they are going to be selling this vault here as like a whole collection that you guys can purchase too, which is always really fun when companies do that. Honestly, already I'm really geeked for this collection. I have no idea how the products in here are going to perform, but I know myself and I can tell you right now that if they hadn't sent this to me, I absolutely would have saved my coins and bought the entire vault because I I just had to, I would have had to. So the collection has an eyeshadow palette that has 16 regular shades with four transformer shades and they're split into like different locations that are part of the world of Westeros. There's also a highlight palette. There are four lipsticks, there are four eyeliners and there is a lip and cheek stain as well as two brushes that are shaped like swords from the show. For the sake of time, I'll open up all the items and show them to you as we go through the video and actually start swatching and testing them. The first thing that you'll see in this video is going to be swatches of the liners and then swatches of the lipsticks. The liners, I'll just do them on my arm and then try to incorporate them in looks. And the lipsticks, I will pair them with one of the looks that I do and then do like live lip swatches so you can see because I don't think swatching lipsticks on your arm is very helpful. And as always, I will timestamp everything down below. So if there's a specific item that you want to see how it performs, you can just jump right to that. You can jump right to the review at the end. You do the whole thing, easy peasy, quick as a whip, just click in the links down below. And I think I may have said this already, but I'm not sure because my head is spinning with excitement right now, but I'm gonna do three eyeshadow looks, try to use as many of the colors from the palette as I can. So this video might be really, really, really long, but you know what? An episode of Game of Thrones is like two hours. So obviously you all are the folks that have the attention span for this kind of thing and it'll be fine. Before we get started, please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you don't mind taking a second to do that because it helps me out tremendously. And if you're new here, maybe you've lurked through a few videos and you like me, but you just have not clicked that subscribe button yet, let me implore you to do so right now. It's so easy and it's free and we'll have fun. My pits are already sweaty, which is never a good way to start anything, but we're gonna plow through it and just start on the first round of swatches. We're gonna do the eyeliners first. Oh, Nicole from the future here. I just wanted to pop in before we get started and let you know that I talk about the show a little bit throughout the video and no major spoilers happen, but I definitely mention a few things that if you are not caught up on at least the last bunch of seasons of the show, you might not know just yet. So this is your obligatory spoiler alert before we get started on the video because I don't wanna ruin it for anybody just because we're doing some makeup. I'm assuming most of you would probably watch the show if you're that interested in this makeup collection, but I just wanted to make sure. This collection contains four new 24-7 liner pencils. The colors are Dragon Smoke, which is a dark gray, the Night King, which is a deep shimmering blue, a very light icy blue called Winterfell Snow, and a, might I say, beautiful bright antique kind of a gold shade called Lannister Gold. So those are those four liner shades. 
The first shade is Dragon Smoke, which I thought was a gray, but it actually has colorful reflex in it. It's much prettier than I thought. Next, you have the Night King, and there is Winterfell Snow, and last is Lannister Gold. I'm gonna try to incorporate all of those liners into the looks if possible. Next up, we have four bullet lipsticks, and we will get into those swatches right now. Before we get started on the first look, let me introduce you to the palette. This is the outside. It has a print on it that looks like pieces of the Iron Throne. This is embossed and quite lovely, very luxe. When you open the inside, there is a mirror and also a quote from Daenerys. And when you pull up the tab on the bottom of that quote, it reveals a little pop-up of the Iron Throne. Now I saw some people on the internet saying that this was extra and bulky and unnecessary, but you know what? This is a Game of Thrones clap. It's supposed to be extra. And on the inside of that, there's also another quote. This one is from Tyrion. The palette itself slides out of the bottom like a drawer. It actually comes all the way out so you can like take it out and put it on top here and use it in conjunction with the mirror. It doesn't close that way. I'm just saying you could like set it like that while you're doing your makeup if you want for convenience sake. There are four sections. Each contains five shades. Four of each of those five shades is a regular eyeshadow, and then there's a transformer shade on the end. The bottom ones are inspired by the Bay of Dragons, which in the show was originally Slaver's Bay, and then Daenerys changed the name to the Bay of Dragons after she freed all the slaves there. Then there's King's Landing, which I feel like the colors of this are very King's Landing-esque, so that makes a lot of sense to me. Then we have Winterfell up here, and Hard Home, which is of course north of the wall, so it's got like that icy vibe to it. The collection also has two brushes that are sword themed, so I'm gonna use them as I do my eyeshadow. We have Arya Stark's Needle and Jon Snow's Long Claw. Kind of wish they did like a whole complete brush set with all of the different swords from the show. I think that would've been so sick. It would've been a lot though. Part of me doesn't even wanna use these because I want to keep them as like a collector's item, but I can always clean them. So I'm going to start the look by using Long Claw in my crease which is a sentence I never thought would come out of my mouth. This first look that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go with some icy shades, but I want to start with a nice transition. So I'm gonna go into the shade House Lannister, and I'm gonna start by putting that through my crease and bringing it up toward my brow. You know, I thought the sword handle was gonna be super inconvenient, but it actually sits pretty nicely between my fingers. Obviously, as far as storage is concerned, this is still not the most practical thing in the world, but as far as actually using it, this is pretty comfortable. I'm gonna pick up a Sigma E40 blending brush and just blend out the edge of that shade, bringing it up toward the brow area. And I'm gonna bring a little bit of that up right in the crook of where the bridge of my nose meets my brow. That kind of opens up my eye space a little bit more and makes my lids look a little bit bigger than they are. Next, on a MAC 221 brush, I'm gonna go into the color Lannister Red, which is like a terracotta red-brown shade. And I'm using that on that small crease brush just to add some depth to the crease area so that when I put the darker shades down later, they have like a nice warmer neutral to blend out into. Sometimes I find that really, really cool toned looks are very, um, they make me look a little bit washed out, but if I blend the colors out into warmer tones, it kind of brings the life back to my skin tone a little bit. So I'm like not actually trying to look like a white walker, you know? And I'm gonna go into the shade Take the Black, which is a very shimmery black shade. And I'm gonna pack that color on the outer portion of my lid. And I'm gonna bring that right up into my crease and tuck it right in where that brown shade is. And we'll blend those together in a second and I'm gonna pop some of that on the inner corner as well. Picking up the same brush I used in my crease, I'm just gonna blend the edge of that out. 
So for the center of the lid, I want to do like a gradient of blue to a bright blue. I'm going to use a couple of the liners in this collection as a base and then put shadows on top. By the way, I'm also watching a Game of Thrones recap from one of my favorite Game of Thrones channels. It's called Alt Shift X. You guys want to know like conspiracy theories or like history or any of that stuff that has to do with like the Game of Thrones universe. That is the best channel on YouTube for it. In my opinion, I'll link his channel down below. I've binged many, many hours of his videos. So the first pencil I'm going to use is in the shade The Night King. I love how these have like an ombre on the pencil. And with this pencil, I just brought it right into my crease. And after I put the shadow down, if I need to, I'll deepen that with more of the black shade. And in the center, I'm going to take a little bit of Winterfell Snow. This color is so pretty. It reminds me a lot of the Urban Decay Vice Lip Topper in the color White Lie. And this color I'm going to bring through the crease and up above to where we even blended out that shade. This is basically the White Lie Lip Topper in a pencil form and I'm so thrilled for it. So next I'm gonna go into the shade Frozen North and I'm gonna apply that with Needle. And I'm gonna put that down over where I put the Night King pencil. And I'm gonna go into the shade White Walker on a pencil brush where we put down the Winterfell Snow pencil. Now that the top of the eye look is pretty much done, I cleaned up underneath my eyes with a little bit of extra concealer and added some extra powder because I was getting a little bit of fallout specifically with the black shade. For the waterline, I want to do something a little interesting and I'm going to reflect the effect that we have on the lid with the liners. So I'm going to do the outer corners with dragon smoke. Then I'm going to fill in a little bit more toward the center with the Night King. And in the very center, I'm gonna use Winterfell Snow. While I'm off camera, like I said, I've been watching those All Shift X videos and I'm watching one about Arya right now. And it's so interesting to me because like part of me loves her because she's like a really resilient badass. But if you actually look at the stuff Arya did, wow, some of it's fucked up. I'm all for the fact that she killed Walder Frey, but like it was a little extra to bake his kids into a pie. You know what I mean? Just like on the top, I'm gonna to do a little bit of an extension with the color Winterfell Snow. And now I'm gonna take the same shadow shades that I used on the top and use them to smoke out the lower lash line, but I'm not gonna bother doing the more warm shades to blend it out into this time. So I'm gonna go right into Take the Black on a Real Techniques detail brush. I'm gonna start packing that right at the outer portion of the lower lash line. On a pencil brush, I'm picking up a little bit more of Frozen North. And on a different pencil brush, a little bit more of White Walker. This time I'm going to wet it with some Fix Plus. I'm gonna go match up the other eye, add some lashes to this, and then we'll try the Dracaris Lip and Cheek Stain and the Mother of Dragons Highlight Palette. All right, I use the House of Lashes Stella Lux Lash. Wow, what a surprise. Are you shocked? And I realized I didn't use one of the Transformer shades in this look, and I kind of want to. So I'm going to go into the shade Hard Home on a Real Techniques Detail Brush. I'm just going to put that right in the very center of those shades. Whenever I wear my fake bangs and I pull the rest of my hair back to do my makeup, I always feel like I look a little bit like Stuart from Mad TV until I take it back down again. The next thing I'm going to try is the Dracaris Lip and Cheek Stain. I tried a little bit of this on my wrist earlier just to see what it looked like before I put it directly on my face. And it's a very like subtle pinkish stain, but it's a nice color. I'm just curious though if it'll show up at all on somebody who's not pale like I am. But first I'm going to try it on my lips. I'm just going to drop a little bit of that color in the center. It kind of has like a little bit of a gel consistently, but a thin one. Like I said, very subtle stain, but it dries very quickly and feels like there's nothing there. So that's nice. Let's see if I could like maybe build a little bit of color with it in the center. That'd be cool. You know, I didn't think I was gonna like this, but I actually feel like for a light makeup day, that's really pretty and it's buildable and it really feels like there's not anything there. And also I feel like Daenerys would wear this, you know, she's got like that, I'm not wearing any makeup, but also I'm snatched kind of a thing going on, which I always appreciate. For the cheeks, I'm gonna put a little bit on my finger and then tap it right on to the blushy area of my face. 
So that's subtle and the color's nice, but I do feel like I can see the wetness of it affecting my under eye powder. Let me zoom in so you can see what I mean. I'm not sure if it's gonna pick up on camera, but just right along the edge there, it kind of looks like my powder is separating a little bit. But I'm thinking it might be a smarter idea to use this before you powder underneath your eyes. I think this is going to wind up being more, for me at least, like a light makeup day item. It's pretty and I could definitely see myself getting some use out of it, but probably not with a full face. All right, next I'm gonna try the Mother of Dragons Highlight Palette. This has three shades in it, named for each of the dragons. So we have Drogon, Viserys, and Rhaegal. It looks like Rhaegal will probably be a little bit too dark for me. I think for this look I'm going to go into Drogon. It's definitely very pink. It's not one of those pink highlights that comes off like a neutral. It's like a pinky highlight. Ooh, it's pretty though. Look at that. Hello. I think I'm going to leave the lip like this with the stain because I don't know, the softness of it is actually pretty nice with this more harsh eye, which means that this is the first look. Oh, before we move on, for experiment's sake, I actually started using a different lip combination just because I wanted to play around with it. So I took the color White Walker, which is this dark red, and I started putting the color White Walker from the palette over it to highlight, and I am getting such an incredible effect with this. I'm gonna zoom you guys in and show you how I did it because it's like, I got to. So I don't know if that necessarily goes with this look at all, as far as like actually wearing it together is concerned, but it looked too cool on the lips, not to show you guys. So I figured I would just do like second lip option for the first look. Okay, we're back for look number two. I switched up my hair. I switched up my sweaty t-shirt and we are ready to move on to, I wanna do like a fiery kind of a look today because I mean, first one was icy. Second one should be fiery. And the third one will be a mixed bag probably. But to start off our fiery feels, we're gonna go into House Lannister again. Toward the end, I'm gonna flick that out past the end of my brow. With a clean blending brush, I'm just gonna blend the edge of that up. Next, I'm gonna go into Lannister Red and I'm going to bring that through my crease, but also I'm gonna pack it on most of the outer portion of my lid. So some more fun Game of Thrones stuff. Um, last year, Matt and I went to Iceland for a week and one of the days we were there, we did something called the Game of Thrones tour where they take you with somebody who was an extra on the show and bring you to all the filming locations and kind of like let you see them and give you a behind the scenes of all that went on there when they were filming. So we went to this big canyon that was like where they filmed the entrance to the Eerie. We saw the waterfall where that little, um, I think he was a herder boy, like a goat herder son was sitting and the dragon flew up and scared the crap out of him. I think it ate him too. I don't know if they showed that in the show, but in the books, pretty sure he ate that kid. We saw the horses that they filmed with there, which is really funny and interesting because in Iceland, they're not allowed to use any horses that are not native to Iceland because I don't know, they have like really strict laws about horse disease over there. And so they had to use these Icelandic horses, but Icelandic horses are really tiny. And so they had big ass characters like the Hound on these tiny Icelandic horses. And they had to use like camera tricks to make it look like he was on a normal size horse. Next, I'm gonna go into the shade Weirwood Leaves on a Real Technique shading brush. And I'm gonna wet that with some Fix Plus. I'm gonna pack that on the outer portion, but I'm gonna keep that more close to the lash line. I'm gonna take my Nabla cut crease brush and I'm gonna do kind of like, not quite a cut crease, more like a half cut crease, but I really just wanna cut the inner corner in here. And I'm just using a little bit of my concealer to do that. That's not even a half cut crease, it's more like a one third cut crease. On the innermost portion of that, I'm gonna pick up the Lannister gold pencil and I'm gonna just trace where I cut that crease with that shiny gold because this gold is so stunning and I really wanna feature it more than just in the waterline. I'm gonna pick up a needle again and I'm gonna go into the color House Targaryen. I'm wetting that just a little bit with Fix Plus and then I'm gonna put it over the lid. Okay, now that we have this fiery, almost like, it almost resembles a flame so far, this look, I'm gonna go into the color Winterfell, which is one of the Transformer shades, and I'm gonna pick some of that up on my pinky finger. I'm gonna try dabbing that over the center. 
And as I blend that out by dabbing, it'll kind of just disperse those little glitters over the area where we use the darker shadows, which kind of even continues the blended effect from the light to the dark. I just concealed underneath my eyes and powdered them so that we can move on to the lower lash line. You'll notice how after I did that, it just looks so much like sharper and cleaner all around. It's such a key step. I'm picking up my Luxie 111 Mini and I'm gonna go back into the shade Lannister Red. I'm living for Lannister Red right now. I at first was a little bit like, oh, I wish it was like more of a true red, but like, I don't know, this red brown is like really doing it for me right now. I'm just taking that underneath my lower lash line and I'm going to sweep it up to meet that little bit of a wing shape that we created on the top. And I'm going to blend out the edge of it with the MAC 217 that I used in a crease earlier. For the waterline, I'm going to use the shade Dragon Smoke. That shade looks so good in the waterline because it's like, it's got the richness of a black shade, but it also has just that little hint of like a blue and red shift in it that just makes it more interesting. Oh my god, I love that shade. And I'm also going to take a little bit of Lannister Gold and just run that underneath the tear duct and sort of blend that into the rest of the look on the lower lash line just to kind of brighten it up on the bottom half and also even everything out. I think I'm going to go just one extra step. You don't even really need to do this, to be honest, but I'm going to take a little bit of, this is not part of this collection, but one of my favorite Urban Decay products, the Heavy Metal Glitter Liner in the color Midnight Cowboy, and I'm just going to touch a little tiny tiny bit of that right there that just there I just feel like that just adds just a, a little something more okay I put on the house of lashes Stella Lux again I added a few freckles with the urban decay brow blade I added a little bit of blush I used the Anastasia peachy love blush trio and I just mixed all three shades together and just swirled them onto my cheeks and for this look I want the highlight to be a little bit more champagne-ish to go along with the more champagne and red tones in the eye so I'm gonna go back into the Mother of Dragons palette and grab the color Viserion on my highlight brush from Nabla that I love. And I'm just gonna sweep that in all the spots where I might wanna be shiny. And for the lip, we're gonna continue with the fiery theme that we've got going on for this look. I want to use the shade Daenerys Targaryen. You guys already saw a swatch of this but I want to wear it over a red liner. Metallic shades look a little bit more flattering when I use a liner that is matte to kind of define them underneath. This color looked really good on its own. I'm just trying to take it like one more step up notch. I'm just gonna pick up the Kat Von D liner in the shade Rosary, basically just because it was the first red that I saw when I looked in my drawer behind me. Just whatever red that you have will work. And this is the second look. Okay, now for look number three, I already have concealer underneath my eyes because I had my base done already. So I put on some extra powder in case we get any fallout because we're gonna go with a little bit of a darker look. Now this look is going to be inspired by an artist that I recently started following. I originally found her work on Pinterest. Her name is Isabel DeVries. And when I found her on Pinterest, I went and I started typing and I found her on Instagram because I was like, I have to follow this artist. She's amazing. And I saw a recent post from her. It looks like this. And I want to create something similar today with this palette. So to begin that process, I'm gonna go into the shade Nymeria up here on a BH number seven brush. And I'm gonna start using that to create a transition, but the transition is gonna be way above our crease today. And initially, as I put down that shade, I'm just gonna follow the shape of my lid. Toward the end though, I'm gonna start flicking that out into a very exaggerated wing. And I'm gonna blend the top edge of that out with a clean blending brush. Next, I'm gonna grab my MAC 268S brush. I always use this brush when I'm going to create like a soft shadowy wing shape. I feel like this brush creates the wing for you. And I'm gonna go into the shade Take the Black. I'm gonna pack that on both sides of that brush. And I'm going to start from the outer corner of my eye and bring that up in a wing shape, but I'm going to keep it a little bit straighter than usual. So not as harsh an angle. So I kind of want an elongated look with this. 
And next I'm gonna take the same brush and just follow that shape that we created with the color Nymeria. And at first it doesn't really matter if the inner portion of this is a little bit on the messier side, where you wanna concentrate on making it neater if you can is the outer portion, because you wanna blend that softly, but keep the shape of it. On the inside, we're gonna fill it with other shades anyway. Next I'm gonna pick up Needle again, and I'm gonna go into the shade Winter Is Here. I'm gonna pack that around the outermost perimeter of where we put down that black, just a little bit. It's a really, really rich shade, so I don't wanna overdo it with that because it's almost like an extension of the black. I'm gonna use the same brush, just cleaned it off first. Next, I'm gonna go into the shade Casterly Rock, which is right here. And I'm gonna put that next to where we put down Winter is here. And in the very center where we still have a little touch of space, I'm gonna take a Real Techniques detail brush and I'm gonna go into the shade Free Folk, pop that right in the center. I'm not wetting this or anything. I just want it to be like a little bit of metallic highlight that's lighter than the rest of those metallic shades. Full center, I'm gonna go back into Winterfell on my finger again. I'm just gonna dab that over the whole middle portion of those shades. Since it's a transformer shade, we'll still get a little bit of that gradient underneath, but it'll also just kind of be like a shimmering pop in the center. Now that all of those shades are down, I'm just gonna go back in with my Sigma E36 and just blend that black in through the crease area until it gives us a nice finish contoured effect on the whole shape of the eye. For the lower lash line, I wanna do the waterline with some color. I'm gonna go in with the Night King pencil. And I'm pulling that down underneath my lashes just a little bit as well because I'm gonna use that to kind of be a base for the color that we're gonna use. Next, on a pencil brush, I'm gonna go into the shade The Sight. I dampened that just a little. I'm just going to run that underneath my whole lower lash line and use that to sweep right up under that wing and meet the black. A little bit of fallout there, so I'm glad that I powdered. Just take a clean blending brush and blend the edge of that. You could totally, absolutely, 100% just leave this look here, add some lashes and have a bomb look. But I wanna recreate the effect from our inspiration photo, which I'll put up here again to remind you what it looked like. So I'm gonna grab my little baggie of Swarovski crystals. The ones in the original look are a mix of like grays and blues and greens, but I am going to use a mix of burgundies and clear because I feel like that gives more of like a Game of Thrones vibe. And to place those, I'm just gonna take my clear lash glue from House of Lashes. I'll put down a dot or two where I want there to be a gem. And then to pick up the gems, I'll either use a wet brush or my tweezers. Okay, I finished up this eye. I added the House of Lashes Stella Lux again. Loving these lashes right now. You can't make me stop using them. I'm gonna freshen up my cheeks with a little bit more of the Viserian highlighter because this color goes so nice with the rest of these shades. These eyes are doing the absolute most right now and I'm so happy about it. For the lips, I want to do something that's really simple because I mean, Come on, we've got a lot happening right here. So I'm gonna line my lips with a nude pencil. This is the Kat Von D lip liner in D minor, and I'm just gonna line the edges of my lips with this and then kind of blend it toward the center. And then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the lips with Sansa Stark. And this is the third look. Okay, three looks and all of those swatches later brings us to the final thoughts portion of this video. I don't think I encountered a single item in this collection that didn't work nicely. Some things will obviously be more appealing to some people than others as usual. So there are definitely like things that I like more than others. Like for example, the lipstick Cersei Lannister is a really nice very metallic bronze shade. But personally for me, that's not a shade that I would reach for very often. But on the other hand, Daenerys Targaryen was more of like my speed as far as metal finish lipsticks are concerned. And the Sansa Stark Sheer lipstick is like really, really nice. And I actually wasn't expecting to like this one that much because I don't usually like sheer, more satin finish nudes, but this looks just so fresh and pretty. And I really feel like it captures Sansa's vibe. So well done there. If I had to pick one thing out of this collection that I liked more than the rest of them, I would say 
uh, the pencils because every single one of them was like a really beautiful shade that I could definitely see myself getting use out of. Winterfell Snow is so, so unique and pretty. I can see myself using this in a million different ways in a lot of different looks and I really like this type of a blue shifting shade. And the Lannister Gold Pencil is so creamy and so metallic and bright. It will make a really, really great waterline color. But I also think that it's great for just throwing on your lids like we did in the second look because it's like, it's like a nice creamy metallic finish that looks like it's almost meant to be an eyeshadow. The palette itself is really good. I had no trouble with any of the shades. The black shade had a bit of fallout, nothing crazy. I do find that I like the shimmer shades in this palette better when they're used wet, but I find that with most shimmer shades in most palettes. But that's definitely almost always the case for me with Urban Decay shadows. And I'm a big fan of the transformer shades just as a concept because I do like adding that little punch of extra reflectiveness to things without necessarily covering up all of the color underneath. I think my favorite of those is Winterfell. I used almost all of the shades in this in one way or another, with the exception of a few right down here on the bottom. I think I skipped Stormborn, Dothraki, and Bend the Knee. So I will try to get into those and use them in an Instagram look sometime this week so you guys can see those too. The Mother of Dragons highlight palette is very cute. I like the theme. The one shade Regal is definitely a little bit too dark for my skin tone, but the other two are fantastic. And I really like that they included a darker shade so more people can like find use for this. Although both of these shades I think will work on more skin tones than you would think. The Dracaris lip stain is very, very pretty. But like I said, don't try to use it over your powdered face because hello, it's going to make it break up. Looking back on my filming process, I should have known that in advance. Like that's such a rookie move. Like obviously putting something wet over your powder is not going to work well. I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, I that's what I did. But it looked really good on the lips. I can definitely see using this on light makeup days just to like kind of amp up my lip color and stuff. And I definitely feel like they captured something that the makeup artists that do Daenerys's makeup probably would use on her because she has a very like natural beauty to her makeup, but she's definitely wearing makeup. You know what I mean? And the two brushes, personally for me, they're going to function more as a collector's item than a actual brush that I use in my day-to-day -day makeup, but they do actually function really well. I was very concerned that the handle down here, like the handle of the sword, was going to be in my way as I do my makeup, but being that it's kind of like a flat shape, it sort of just sits between your fingers, almost like an anchor. It almost kind of makes it easier, if I'm being honest. But like I said, I'm probably going to clean these and then put them on the side as a collector's item because like I have plenty of brushes and these are just, I mean, just over the top. All of these items will be available on April 14th, which is like right before the premiere of the final season. So, you know, a hype of excitement. I'll leave all the details for that down below in the description box. I'll also leave, you know, links and timestamps and all that down there as well. I know this was like more of a first impression, us just trying everything than like a true review because I was so excited for these items, but I would be honest with you guys, if I thought any of this stuff was shitty, it's not. It's literally everything that you would expect from Urban Decay products. They're not new formulas, so it's not anything super surprising. It's just Game of Thrones themed. And personally, I can't find anything wrong with that. Is the collection over the top? Yes. Do I still love it? Yes. If it was not over the top, would I have been a little bit sad about it? Yes. Am I going to leave these in like a little special place in my makeup room and probably never touch them again because they're just like holding a special place in my heart and I don't want to use them all up? Yes. As a matter of fact, speaking of that, I just want to say how grateful I am for Urban Decay sending me this package. It is so cool to get a package like this from a brand that I have loved for so long about a show that I have loved for so long. It's just, it's very cool and I'm very grateful. And I have you guys to thank for that as well. So thank you so much. Leave me a comment down below. I want to know two things. First of all, who is your favorite Game of Thrones character? And second of all, are you excited for this new season or are you scared shit? Because I'm a little bit of both, you know? Um, I kind of, 
um, anxious to see what happens, but I also can't wait for it to start. Like that's where I am emotionally about the whole thing. Please don't forget to take a second to leave a like on this video if you don't mind taking a second to do it because it really helps me out and I always appreciate it. And also if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe because I would love to have you around for more videos. If you want to keep up with me between videos, I'm at Ms. Quinface pretty much everywhere you could ever want to find me on the internet, but mostly I spend most of my time on Instagram hanging out posting on my stories. I post other things over there that are like more creative editorial kind of makeup that I might not post here on YouTube. So if you're interested in that, come find me over there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these three looks and found all of the swatches and stuff helpful. I will be back in a few days with another video and I think that's all I have to say. So I will see you in the next one.